Alright, welcome back. This is Daniel here and in this video we'll learn another Scala specific thing, which is the difference between calling functions by name versus by value. Alright, so I'm going to define two functions here. I'm going to define a function called called by value, which takes a number x and this is a long. I'm going to tell you why a long in a second. And this guy returns a unit. I don't really care that it returns a value. It just does something. So this is a function with side effects. And this guy just prints by value and a colon and then x. And I want to do this twice. I promise this will make sense in a second. Now, a new thing. I'm going to define a method called called by name which takes yet another parameter named x and this time instead of long I'm going to put in a little thing a little arrow here long which is the type long and it also returns unit and the implementation is going to be identical so print these two guys twice now this little arrow here tells the compiler that the parameter will be called by name. This is a different evaluating parameters in functions. I'm going to um, explain the concept by example. So I'm going to call called by value first with the value system dot nanotime, which tells me the current time of the system in nanoseconds. All right. And I'm going to call called by name with the same expression. All right, so system.nanotime. So normally, with two functions with the same implementation, this guy returns a value, and it will be printed twice. And with a call by name, with the same implementation, with the same expression, this guy will return a different time because by the time this thing runs the time will have changed so a different value but still printed twice so we would expect one value to be printed twice and then another value to be printed twice all right so let me cl right click and run this guy and let's look at the values so the first value is identical but the second value look at this one the third value is one thing but the fourth value, instead of being identical, it's different. Now, explanation time. First, we choose the parameter to be of type long because the time functions in Scala and on the JVM return longs. All right, so nanoseconds are usually quite a lot since 1970. All right, so we chose the parameter to be of type long. It's really of no significance. We just want it long to be compatible with a time function. Okay, now. This little arrow over here makes all the difference in the world, and this explains the two different values here in the second by name call, which, by the way, I should really change. So we might actually make the difference. So two things by value and two things by name, and the by name values are different. Now let's finally introduce the concepts. So in the by value call, the exact value of this expression is computed before the function evaluates and the same value is used in the function definition. This is probably the style of calling parameters that you've used in other languages. So basically the computer evaluates system nanotime, which is this guy. So it's as if I said system.nanotime is this little guy with an L at the end and use this guy throughout the entire function definition. All right, so this is basically what the computer does. Okay, this is what call by value means. It evaluates this guy and it's used inside the entire function definition. By contrast, in the by name call, this expression is passed literally as is. That is why it's called by name. And the expression is evaluated every time. So it's as if I said system.nanotime is the replacement of x throughout the entire function definition. And suddenly, the whole thing starts to make sense. So this value is indeed printed twice, but system nano time here is evaluated two times, two different times. And that is why we see two different values 
here in the by name instance. So this is what this little funky arrow does differently. It delays the evaluation of the expression passed as a parameter and it's used literally every time it's used in the function definition. This is the by name call. This is extremely useful in lazy streams and in things that might fail. That's what we are going to study when we look at the try type. All right. But let's get some more mundane examples before that. I'm going to create a small infinite recursive function. I'm going to call this infinite, which returns, say, an int. And its implementation is going to be 1 plus infinite. This is really a dumb function. Nobody would use it. But uh, just for the sake of proving the by name concept. And I'm going to define another function called print first, which takes uh, a parameter of type int and another parameter of type int, but called by name. So with this funky arrow. And this guy will just print the first thing, the first parameter, not the by name one. Okay, let's try print first with infinite and the number say 34. Okay, so infinite returns an int and the number 34 as well, the number 34. Now we expect infinite because it's called by value to be evaluated first, but only a fool would do that because it will crash with a stack overflow error, of course. But let's see what happens. So let's comment this out. Let's see what happens if I try print first with the parameter swapped, so 34 and infinite. Let's see what that happens. Well, this thing runs well, and it prints the number 34 without crashing the stack overflow with um, the infinite recursive call. Well, why is that? Well, as we said, the by name parameter delays the evaluation of the expression passed here until it's used. Well, since the parameter y is not used, this guy is never actually evaluated, which is why our program seems to survive. All right, so quite an important topic. We learned about call by value, which is basically the kind of call that we've been using the whole time. And if I have a function with a call by value parameter, the value passed to the function is actually used inside the function definition. The value is computed before the function is called, and the same value is used throughout the entire function implementation, no matter how many times the parameter x in this case is used. Now, by contrast, in call by name, if I have a function with this funky error syntax, the uh, parameter that I pass in is not a value, but the expression itself literally passed in to the f uh, function with a call by name. And the expression is passed as is and is evaluated at every use within the function definition. So bear in mind. All right, this was a shorter but quite powerful one. Make sure you get back to this video when you find anything confusing with call by name. I'm Daniel, and I'm waiting for you in the next videos.